What's going on guys, Matt over here, Lethal Garage, and today we're installing Line Lock. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to do as much as I possibly can, if not everything, and I do have my uh, beautiful mechanic here. <laughs> if you guys don't know Mike, Bowtie Britches Instagram, awesome guy. He's basically here to make sure I don't break my car. So again, I'm not a mechanic, I've never done this before, but I am gonna take on this install the best I can uh, and hopefully have a doctor mechanic over my shoulder being like, don't do that, or okay, yeah, good. He probably won't, he'll probably be not saying any yes and it'll be a lot of no's. So let's get into the install. Again, this is the SJM Manufacturing Line Lock Kit. You can see all the details down below in the description. Um, big shout out to them. I purchased this, he shipped it to me very quickly. And again, we'll go through uh, the buttons and stuff. If you guys didn't see the unboxing, um, I was talking about the switches and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Um, yeah, you can check that out. That's in the upper right hand corner, but let's get into this install. Let's do it. I'm going to be using the beautiful instruction booklet and uh, Mike. So luckily Mike has actually already installed this unit on another car, actually two other cars. No, just one. Well, it was on Ryan's car, right? Yeah. It's on Ryan's yeah. Car. So, uh, sorry, one other car. And, uh, yeah, so there's a few things you got to do. Most of the work is happening over here uh we're going to be removing your washer fluid uh setup this literally just stabs into the reservoir that's sitting in this area right here and we will be pulling out the overflow we did just drive my car around so hopefully it's not filled and uh yeah it's pretty warm right now we're gonna get some leakage oh mike's gonna show us a workaround on that um but we'll be removing uh the washer fluid uh line and a few other things so we're gonna get into this step by step and i'm gonna walk you through it step one disconnect battery your battery is in your trunk if you didn't know this i've shown this on a few other videos passenger backside disconnect your negative terminal from battery check first few things going to be taken off the fill res or the fill stem This literally just pulls right on out. Simple enough. Gonna detach. Just pour more room. You need a deep up. Gonna need a deep socket. So Mike says he has a little trick on not having to worry about the car being hot. Really? Should I get a towel? Yeah, she's got a small one. And also do you have like a small bolt? A bolt? Yeah, like a three eighths. What, what? Is that bigger? Yep, that's bigger. There. Perfect. Alright, and then one zip tie. Alright. Some guy here. Stuff that over there. Oh, I see. Look at that. Look at that little handy dandy trick right there. What about this side, though? Oh. Huh? Spit holes. And now you've got room to work. Sweet. Thanks, Mechanic Mike, <laughs> for showing us the ways. Next step, you can see your ABS setup. There's a bolt right here. This is the bolt that we need to remove. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. We're pulling that off, and this is where the assembly 
um, with the solenoids that we're installing is mounting at. So that's the reason why you want to remove the reservoir. That's also the reason why we remove the washer fluid fill line. So we'll get in there with the tool. There is a wa oh, sorry. So here's the bolt and there is a washer. You want to take both of those off because that's going to sit like that when you put it back in. At this point, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. One, you can line with paper or towels or anything like that because during this assembly, you could scratch your paint. The other side is, is we will be opening up the ABS setup, which will leak brake fluid, which if you get brake flu fluid on your paint and let it sit, it will eat your paint away. So in this instance, I have my throwaway towels. We're going to line all sorts of areas around this to make sure we don't get brake fluid or anything on anything. And um, Mike is impressed with my cheap throwaway towels. He, every time I pull them out, he's like, these are your cheap throwaway towels? Rich people. So next step here is actually putting together the assembly, loosely fitting all the items. Now they do, SJM highlights very clearly during brake line assembly, wiggle the connections while tightening to ensure they seat correctly uh, with matting surfaces. So you do want to wiggle them around. You do want to loosely tighten them and you can see the layout in the image that comes there. But so lower setup, you're already going to have this line that my pinky finger is touching. It should already be connected from in the box. At least mine was, um, but that's the small one that comes up and around. Then there's the bigger line that comes down on the lower solenoid comes up and over has a nice little fun u-shape and then we have the other two lines which mike just took off you want to put those on the v-shape one which goes on the higher mounted solenoid like that and then literally i'm just going to call that one the the big u but it's a smaller piece and attaches to the top side of the lower mounted solenoids. When you hear me saying solenoids, that's what my hand's touching right now. We verified all of these fittings are tight. Now you're not gonna be screwing these all the way into the, the bracket or the, what is this called? National pipe thread. It's, it's not a tight, tight. Basically there's a flange in there. You're just tighten it so it sits nice and flush and it's a tight squeeze. And as Mike outlined, if you're going too tight, you're just beating it up at that point. And there's no reason to do that. So you want them nice and tight, but not to the point of, oh, I don't see those threads anymore. <laughs> That's not how that works. So at this point, we have all the lower parts uh, tightened. We verified it. It'll just make it easier before, like instead of trying to reach down in there and do it once it's mounted. But now we're going to slide this into position, bolt up the bolt, and uh, go from there. And one other thing to highlight, just so you guys know, these parts will still move. So don't feel like, oh, I tighten it and I can't move it to make it line up perfectly. Yeah, this moves. This whole unit is one piece. This is electromagnet. So, yeah, you'll be able to align it. So don't worry about that. Wait, which one? Oh, I see. Is this going up and over? Mm-hmm. Clear! Got you in. Now, taking that 10 millimeter bolt we took off earlier, and you won't have to, oh God, don't drop that. Please don't drop. <laughs> okay, so that's tightened. We're good to go. Okay, so at this point, we are removing the right and left uh, lines from the ABS connection. So your right line is actually the second one back, and the left is the, you know, popping things out. 
The left is the third one back, and they are going to connect into... Uh, the camera can't see. Are you able to scoot forward a little bit? So the right line is going to be connecting into this front connection, and the left line is actually going to be connecting into this back one right here. So when tightening, we are going to need a 13 mil to get these free, and then you're going to need a 5 8 uh, to hold these when we're tightening them back down. So, and this is also the point where we're going to get brake fluid everywhere, and this is why we have towels laying all around. I don't know why there's one sitting up here, but whatever. Now the fun part is going to be getting down in here. So it doesn't scratch your sensitive skin. So it doesn't scratch your <laughs> sensitive skin. So this one is relocating. Oh, you're sitting in there pretty good. Maybe I should pull forward and go around. So this one's coming over here, right? There we go. Sorry, fat hands in the way. That black bar. The biggest thing that you just got <laughs> was the black. It's, you know, it's a primary structural support for the vehicle. The biggest thing here is you got aluminum threads here, so you want to line it up and get it threaded properly, or you can strip it, and that could be the worst thing you can possibly do. So, this is now in there snug, so we'll be able to tighten that down in a little bit. But that's the right line. <laughs> Rinse and repeat for the left line, which is going to be really fun to do. <laughs> If you're wondering like oh why did you cut the film here it was because we thought we had to reroute that but we didn't so we put it back the way it was so basically just loosen it up you'll pull it pretty close to the abs controller and then thread it in so yeah let's thread it <laughs> which i'm not <laughs> no how the heck this is your channel oh. yeah i'm not doing that any tighter by hand about as tight as it's gonna go. So now we're taking the left. We're gonna start from the back and work our way forward. As you can see, we'll screw into the top front portion here. But we're gonna thread the rear side first if I can get my fat freaking hand under there. And there's so many some jerkins for that. You have both sides started there? Yeah. Look at you. And then Is this turn? Sorry, looking at the pretty picture. Yeah, that's twisted the wrong way. Is it? Yeah. This is, sure? this is supposed to be faced that way. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? According to the picture. Uh, I'm the, I don't need to record tighten those every little square inch, but the idea is tighten it until it's you feel the flange you, you basically feel it when I tighten that one you can kind of feel it Compressing and then just a little bit more Good to go. So at this point We're well we're Mike is taking over with his smaller hands because my hands are ginormous And I'm taking forever doing it and Mike doesn't have all day What? He's shaking his head at me but we're, <laughs> Mike's going through and tightening up everything, making sure nothing's loose. Uh, as you remember, we tightened the lower before we started the install and realized the upper side was twisted out of proportion, so we had to loosen it to put it back in the direction it was supposed to go, and now we just tighten that up. So now everything's tightened up, so now it's a matter of adding fluid and bleeding brakes. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're connecting all the wiring and everything to make it work. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the connectivity now, um, just to kind of give you guys an example of what we're gonna be doing. So there's a lot of things here to consider. So here's the original setup here. You have your momentary push button, you have your master toggle switch and your LED light. And this is very much the diagram right in here to show you how to connect it all up. So basically we have our line lock set up. There's two wires coming off it. You have your positive and negative. Your positive side's getting power. Um, and then your obviously, uh, or sorry, not positive and negative, but you have your positive and ground. So your one side's going to ground, the other side's getting hooked up through the butt connector. That then is going through the firewall through to gather power. Um, there's just there's a lot of things into you can splice tap into 12 volt uh, what they typically do is tap into the power that is in your cigarette lighter so I don't use my cigarette lighter don't have to worry about it so that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna be wiring slightly differently than they outline here this is the diagram you want to go by if you're gonna use the stock setup that is provided now as you know they sent me this push button it doesn't I mean it does change the way things are wired slightly and i'm going to go through that um, once we get into the car but for the time being i'm going to run this red wire through the vehicle and get it to the cigarette lighter and i'm going to show you how to do that so one of the fastest ways to get a wire into your vehicle is most likely to get it to go through the sound tube hole got rid of my sound tube but you can see it right here there's a cap over it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a wire through there pull it through the car and get it to my cigarette lighter i'm going to show uh, I disconnected the negative terminal so if you're gonna do this roll down your windows I should have highlighted that because we have to get in the car and if you have no connection your windows can't roll down um, but we're gonna get the wire to here and apologies it's dark in here so this is where the wire is gonna get to um, what I'm gonna end up doing is these side panels here pull right off they're just clipped in place so it's not too difficult to get them off but I'm gonna pull this one off so I can get back over here and run the wire to the other side, pull the other side off and uh, get to the cigarette lighter and be able to pull the whole thing out of the vehicle. So I'm gonna attempt to do all that, get as much as I can on camera so you guys can see and I'm gonna set up some lights in here uh, so you can properly see things. So at this point, we are following the instructions. We're gonna be grounding the uh, solenoids to the vehicle. There is a ground block, you can kind of see it. Well not where I'm standing from with the camera, but you can see the ground block where Mike's pointing to. Yeah, you can see it good enough. But we're grounding it there. Uh, the kit does come with uh, a part to connect both the wires, but we are going to, instead of just crimping them in place as the butt connector would be, um, we're going to solder them and use heat shrink wrap to make it look pretty. So obviously it's a little bit deviated from the instructions, but um, we're just doing it. What are you looking for? So here's the eyelet. We're gonna be connecting those two wires and then crimping them down. Crimp the back, crimp the front. So, and this is a, it's a redundant step. It's a perfectionist step. You don't have to do this, uh, but we're just soldering the connection together. I just really don't like failures. Yes, vibrations can cause problems down the road and we're just gonna avoid that. Also heat and stuff like that as well. Expanding and attracting. So, removing the ground wire bolt to put ours on. This bolt's not in the easiest of positions to get free, but then again... Pop tool is easy. If we had uh, universal swivel joints, it would have been out five minutes ago. Like so. Are you supposed to be doing this? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> so, sliding the eyelet over the bolt. Dude, that's a crazy bolt. It's got like fangs and stuff. It's got little, just little clips. Yeah, that way it it's stays. Like double grounded. Well, no, it's so it orientates the ground strap onto it so it stays a certain way. 
I just want to tighten it up. It doesn't spin. So at this point, we're taking the long red wire that came in the package and we're connecting it to the power wires on the solenoid and uh, gonna heat shrink them. So you can see Mike. And again, the heat shrink and all that stuff is not part of the package. Um, the package comes with a bunch of butt connectors and whatnot. So we're just doing it a slightly more advanced way in hopes to avoid any issues whatsoever. I'm not saying that you'll have issues if you use the butt connectors in the package. Uh, but this is just a more sure proof way. Just not everyone has soldering guns and shrink wrap and all that kind of stuff available to them. So, But if you want it, contact your snap on dealer. Put the shaky hand in there. Handy dandy. It's hard to see the wire, but Right where my finger's at, you can see the black cable. We did put uh, basically a cover on the red wire so it's gonna blend in and not be a eyesore back there. Again, not something included in the kit. It's just going the extra mile. But yeah, that's ran. And uh, yeah, now it's time to connect it inside the car, basically. Okay, so at this point, we have, here, let me get the wire. Okay, so at this point, we've pulled the wet, let's get some. Get some better lighting over here, huh? So we pull the red wire through the um, the firewall, through the sound tube hole. And it's not too hard to get to. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can, uh, if you can see where that wire is going up to, but you can see up where it's coming down at. It's not too overcomplicated. If you're a giant like me, it does get hard to squeeze up in here. But now what I'm gonna do is run this cable to the passenger side, because that's basically where it's going to. And there's a small area right up in here. You can see where my finger's at right here. And it's right behind the radio dashboard and it's kind of an open area. Um, I have some long poles you can use like a ruler or a yardstick or anything like that. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm sure there's far easier ways to do this, but I'm just taping my red wire to the end of this. And I'm gonna slide that oh Greg's here so I slid that through I have a secondary extension so I can get it all the way through easily and now I just have to feel so I don't get it stuck somewhere where it's not supposed to go do you see it on that side And there's no lighting, right? <laughs> Do you see it? Yeah, there it is. What the hell is this? I just pushed it through so the wire didn't fall off. It worked. Baby, Jesus. It worked. So this plastic piece right here literally just snaps in. And typically, I will pull this piece off so you can get into it a little bit. Um, but this should just pop out and let us get into here and that's not gonna really let us get to the cigarette lighter all that well unfortunately oh well, now that the wires pulled through Mike and I are going the unconventional way of pulling out the cigarette lighter literally this is probably not how you're supposed to do this but we are not going to rip out the whole center console to get to the bottom side of it that that's what makes it look so cool you know, I do have the instruction guides that show how to pull everything apart on this car. It probably tells you to take the center console out. Ooh, that made a snap noise. Yeah. Are we using liquid nails to put this back in? Um, from the Asian lady salon, yeah. Yeah, see? As you saw from my earlier video, I pulled off the side trim. We pushed the cable through and just ran it. You can kind of see a piece of it right there, obviously. And we're gonna tuck it up underneath. We should be able to get it to pop out where the cigarette lighter is. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, man, Lee, man. But it's open, right? It's not like a solid piece under there. Yeah, we got it. Ah, oh, we uh, did it. <laughs> or Mike did it. Uh, <laughs> oh, finger cramp. Uh, 
so we ran the wires now it's just tucking everything back in place and this clip is such a bastard to put back in place i don't care in this instance it's worthy and i'm going to try to do it one-handed with a camera this is not going to work out well i know he just was saying he's like i'll go some love Aha! See, brute force, it pays off every now and then. Except that's not in. There we go. Pretty. That's not in. Why are you not clipped? Oh, you're underneath. Do you hold Oh, I think you just stopped it. What? It's recording. It just darks out if it sits. There we go. Whoever was working on this earlier. <laughs> jerk. Everybody knows what's inside your ear now. <laughs> Wax. 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 I think I cleaned it about a week ago. At this point, we have the SJM button, uh, and I've convinced Mike to, well, it doesn't just, the, the push button doesn't just slide in. We have to take the metal housing out, so Mike's working on that. And you pull back these two little black pieces like that. Yeah, but I think it pushes forward, not pulls out. No, you're supposed to pull them out. No, you can't pull the silver part out. It's got the lip on the inside of the thing. Don't, don't, don't talk to me like that. Don't get lippy with me. It's Sunday. It's the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See? I was right. So that pops right on out. That's not too shabby. Oop. The question is, will that slide in with the pigtail plugged in? Yes. Oh, it's still tight. Oh, dude, that looks clean. It does. That look does. how clean that looks. That oh, does look pretty nice. it's so pretty. It's a little to the uh, left. <laughs> ah! That does look really nice. That looks very good. Okay, jumping in here a little bit after the fact, uh, just to highlight, because I'm just going over the video, editing it, and I realize I didn't really chime in on this or say this directly, but with the upgraded button on this install, the way it works is technically you're supposed to install this with a toggle switch. The toggle switch is basically the master switch that turns the power to it. When wired correctly, the light should be red to show you that it's active and ready to be used. The way I've wired it is slightly different to where it lights up only when I push the button when it's activated. So I, I depress or I push in the brake, I push the button, light turns on while I'm pushing the button so I know it's working at that time. Now, if you wire this per the diagram that is included with your purchase, uh, it will light up the moment you turn the power on so you know it's active and ready to go. Again, I bypassed this because I already have the cover because I did my cigarette lighter and I'm not gonna be accidentally pushing the button unless I push, lift up that cover and push the button. So, just wanted to highlight that real quick. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this specifically, feel free to post it down below, uh, but let's get back to the install. Okay, so in the diagram, they highlight the two blues and the red as being the power. Um, I, I'm not an electrician, so I'm a little confused by it all, but this is the light and the push button. We are skipping the toggle switch is what we're doing. So this will be active at any time. So if I push that button, we're locked. No. No? Push the button and then compress the brake? Then you're locked. Then you're locked. Press the brake, then push the button. So if you're holding the button down and you push the brake and you... It, it'll hold the brake. It'll hold pressure on it. Mm -hmm. It won't. It won't. It'll act as a one-way valve. It won't let it back off the pressure. As soon as you release the pressure, the solenoid opens back up and it loses the pressure back. Awesome. So that's, what, that's that's why I, that's why I never liked uh, the toggle switch on these because it's kind of redundant. Yeah, it is. So the other way to do this would be to do the toggle switch and what that does is just kills all of the power to the button and everything so it's just not active. 
we're just saying screw it skipping the toggle switch so it's active at any time and so when i hit the button which it's covered so i don't have to worry about accidentally pushing it or something like that um will be good but if you want to be super safe and do it the right way or at least the way the instructions outline you use the toggle switch that is then your safe your secondary safety measure um so that you can't turn it on mm -hmm. yes so but to do that to so there's the led in there that's your red wire i believe uh, -huh. uh then the blue wires are the actual button itself and the black is your ground so as you know we have our main power coming from uh, the front side of the vehicle um, to power the solenoids and everything what we're actually doing is we're pulling the power from the former cigarette lighter which is the purple cable to power everything um, and since this is already under fuse we don't have to connect the fuse butt connector that they already had or that came with the device because uh, this is already fused in the fuse box under the cigarette lighter and then there's already a ground there so there's a few things we've cut out doing that now if you do want to power it the other way you still have to tap into 12 volt and um split the connection so you have your power then run all the buttons and the toggles and all that just as it's outlined in the diagram that comes with it but again i've already explained why we're bypassing a lot of that and so Mike is now tapping into these wires. He's going to solder them, make them look pretty so it's a solid connection, and we should be basically good to go. Put back the car. Put the car back together underneath the hood, which I actually think Mike already put the radiator back in place. Our radiator overflow. And then the reason why I'm doing it like this... Because you're going to test it? Or no? Well, no, I'm actually going to solder those together. Why are you doing it that way? The reason why I'm doing it like this is because if we want to ever go back to being stock, take all this stuff out, you simply take your solder gun and just pop everything out. Oh. And then there's nothing cut, nothing butchered. So wait, you don't have to put both blue lines? How do you know which blue line is the proper blue line? It, all it does is complete the circuit. Oh, I see what you're saying. So then you're gonna attach the other two to the red. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> My car's on fire! So, completing the circuit, or the loop, or whatever you wanna call it, splicing into our beautiful red wire that we ran. So this is actually bringing power to the solenoids and all of that at this point. Because as you know, the purple wire is what's powering everything. <laughs> and if we did it correctly, it will work. Does accessory have to be on for the lighter to... Does it? I see no light. So I push the brake and then I hold push, the button. You push this button down. You stomp on the brake. Yep. Push the brake all the way down. And then you do your burnout. With, with my foot, foot still on the brake. With your foot off the brake. That's going to be weird. Yep. <laughs> and then as soon as you release this button, it releases the pressure. And, and the car go. goes. Oh, that's going to be a lot easier to do burnout. I'm going to screw this up the first time. It's going to be great. In a stick, though, that makes it a little more interesting. Well, no, because you can have a... I don't think you have to... You can set it up to where you don't have to push to hold the button, right? Yeah, you can do it on a toggle switch. That's how my yeah. brother has his. Obviously, I did a lot of things that aren't exactly the same as the instructions highlight. Um, one of the things is they assume that you're going to drill a hole in the firewall and in the package there is a little black grommet that you put in the hole so that way it's a nice tight seal and you're not letting moisture and stuff break through through your firewall. So if you don't want to go through the sound tube, you can go that route. The other side is, is we still have to bleed the bricks. So that's the last thing we're doing here. All the wiring, everything works. We've tested the button, it activates. Uh, and I, I was surprised Mike was explaining how it's gonna work because of the way that we wired and set it up. It's literally push and hold the button. Um, wait, is it is it hit the brakes and then push the button or is it push the button and push then the hit, button the hit the brakes? Yeah, sorry. 
I haven't done it yet, so it's going to be push the button, slam on the brakes, then basically you let go of the brake and just lay into the power and do a massive burnout, and then let go of the button. Right after you're done breeding the brakes. After we're done bleeding the brakes. Breeding. 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 Breeding and bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have multiple brakes happening. <laughs> little little brake bubbles. That's Never mind. I, I quit. Now, it's time to bleed the brakes. So you got to jack up the front of the car, because obviously we're only bleeding the fronts. And uh, yeah, got to get to them and get that done. So let's do it. All right, go ahead and push it down. Let it go. Push it down. Ooh. Let it go. Push it down. Get some air there. Let it go. Brakes are now bled, now it's time to test it. Now you can do a quick test in your garage without having to drive anywhere by simply starting up the car. It's in park right now. So hit my brake, go into drive. Let me see if I can capture this. Come on, I can't see camera. So you're into drive, lift up my little safety hatch, push the button. My foot is all the way on the brake. If I let go, I'm in drive, it, the car's going nowhere. But as soon as I let go of this button, ah, it rolls. <laughs> it works! I got a camera outside. I'll cut to that. And I got a camera here. We're just going to show you the operation. See if it works. See if it holds the car and lets me do a burnout. Yeah, I'm going to have Mike hold the gimbal. So we're in drive. Brakes all the way engaged. Push the button. It should be activated, right? And at this point, we're just doing a burnout.
So that is the install line lock. Again, if you wanna follow the instructions step by step, it's very clear. Obviously we did things a little bit differently, but overall it turned out really good. You could see it works. Uh, super happy we have line lock. Um, got, uh, got yelled at by an old guy saying he's gonna call the cops. Um, yeah, I probably should have handled that differently, but I don't know. I was irritated, agitated, whatever, whatever. So thank you SJM for getting me the product as soon as you can and for making this product. Uh, it's under 300 bucks. You can add line lock. It's not completely difficult. Obviously I had some help. Um, we did things a little bit differently like soldering the wires instead of using the butt connectors and stuff like that. Again, it's just another way to do it. It's not required. Um, and if you have the tools and the know-how, you can do it that way. If not, butt connectors and all that stuff. So the, wire, the wiring schematics and all that are in the kit. It's, they're very, they're very, very uh, bonehead proof. Um, it, it walks you through step by step on how the wire should go, where the plug-in um, uh, circuit and all that stuff goes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm rambling. So there you go. If you guys have questions, post them down below. Um, it works, it's great. I, I the, the scariest thing is not knowing how much throttle I have to give the car now to do a burnout. So we did, we ended up having to do three burnouts for me to kind of like not over rev it. And then the first time I did it, I didn't turn off stability track and traction control like a complete noob. Uh, and then the final one was a nice epic burnout. Uh, you can see it here again. But this will work out really good at the quarter mile and eighth mile uh, drag racing. Um, it's just, you're not putting all that pressure on your rear rotors and brake pads. I'm not wearing those out anymore. Yes, those are disposable items and things you have to replace all the time and they're not super expensive, but it's just so much easier now. And the way that we set it up, I now have a, a nuclear launch button in my car. Really cool. That's it's that button that he sent me is an add an item that you have to buy it separate. Um, I showed you the ones that come with the kit. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So there you go, line lock install. It's freaking awesome. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, check it out. Link is down below. Again, it's I think it's under 300 bucks. I wanna say it was like 279 or something like that before tax and shipping and all that stuff. I could be completely wrong. I'll look at it and I'll post it down below in the description. Um, but yes, it's installed, good to go. Another awesome mod for the Lethal Camaro. So as always guys, thanks for checking out this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested in more Camaro content. If not, likes, comments, shares are appreciated. But until next time, hope to see you on the road.